is Oluwashen Ogunubwe. He is currently the head recruitment and selection of ICS Outsourcing Limited. You're welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me. So for how long have you been in the HR space and how has your experience been like? Okay, so the HR space is about 10 years. Um, it's been a wonderful experience. Um, there are ups and downs, but over the years, I tend, uh, I tend to understand that it's, it's service. It's a profession that you need to serve people. You need to help people. You impact people. I've met people. People have um, walked up to me where well, I can't remember when last I had a conversation with them. And they tell me, you did this for me. You did this for me. You did this for me. That's the joy in part of it. But the bottom space, it's, um, the HR space, it's a green space in the Nigeria, Nigeria space. And it's an opportunity to impact and make sure that the work system um, is carried out. The HR space in the Nigeria economy, it's growing, it's building, and I believe um, over time we will get to how HR practice should be established properly in the Nigerian space. All right, thank you. Okay, so I would like to talk about a little about um, your recruitment experience. Yeah. Because the last time I checked, that space, it's, there's, there's a lot of drama yeah. in the recruitment space. Yeah. In the sense that they've, they've been um, back and forth with recruitment, different stages of recruitment, and eventually there is an offer. So, of course, today we are talking about those three major things you must do as a candidate before accepting their offer. So, let's talk about your experience. Okay, so um, recruitment, most times, um, you need to get the right candidates. Getting the right candidates, most times, is not easy. You could throw an advert out um, for a slot of one, and you have about 700 people applying for just one slot. And wow. you need to screen wow. to make sure you get the right candidate. Now, it's going to take a lot of time to actualize that. Sometimes you, have, you, you need to poach. If you're not poaching, you need to reach out to a friend that could make referral to you, somebody who you, you can stand for. But um, it's a journey. It's a journey. The client is expecting something, and you must make sure you meet up with what the client wants. All right? So... Congrats, you've gotten the job, but have you been offered? Have you been given an offer? Have you been asked to start? Have you had an agreement? When I said agreement, have you had? Have you signed a contract to begin the job you have been given? So the topic today is very important because um, you don't start a job when you've not signed an offer. You don't sign. You don't start a job with verbal offer. Verbal offer is not an offer. Uh, there are lots of things to talk about this role. Uh, I just believe as we continue in this conversation, we'll open up more and I'll open our eyes to more about it. Um, I have a legal background and okay. I, I understand that even for, um, for whatever relationship, maybe business, employment relationship, offers could mean oral, verbal, right? Written, right? And if in our country, in, in Nigeria, we are saying that you should not consider a verbal offer as a very important offer, kind of offer. I'm sure that came as a result of ugly experiences because in the white man's land, you know, there are people you just have a conversation, have an agreement on something, and you have a handshake, and that settles it. And both parties are keeping to their own terms of agreement. So if you're telling us that there are crucial things you have to do before accepting that offer, I think the audience and the, our viewers, obviously, should know about these things, knowing that there are ups and downs once it's verbal. So can you share these three crucial things right. that one must do before accepting the offer? Okay, thank you for this question. All right, so I want you to understand that um, a job offer, a job opening was advertised. You applied for that job. You did research. You researched about the company, you researched about the role, you went through the interview stages. You invested your energy and resources for all these processes. And at the end, you were told you've been selected. It doesn't end there. It's just another beginning. It doesn't end there. Okay, so for somebody who has worked, who's working somewhere presently, and you're told you've gotten the job, and the next thing you do, oh, they've told me I've gotten the job, I go to resign. And by the time you are going to the job, they are telling you that you need to give us a space of two months, three months. Wow. It's happening. I've had people call me that, oh, I was told I got this job um, and I've resigned. 
And the next now asking, where is the agreement? What proof do you have to show that you've been offered, um, you've been given an offer? Now, aside that, sometimes you, they, you okay, for those who have resumed based on verbal conversation, you resume at the work and you, you, you find out that the role you interviewed for is actually not what you are doing. Oh, wow. You were interviewed for a certain role, but when you got there, you were asked to do another thing. Wait, if I get you clearly, yeah, for instance, mm. um, candidate A was interviewed for maybe the job of um, HR, HR manager. HR manager. And you're resuming to take over the role of maybe an, an audit manager or compliance manager. Talking about the three most important things, um, you might want to look at the job title. Some job title is not the most, most important. You might want to look at the pay. Some pay is not the most important. You might want to look at location. Some location is not important. But these three things, uh, they, have high, uh, they have high impact whether you're going to pick that offer or not. But there are many more things to consider apart from these three things I'm mentioning. Like I said earlier, um, the job title. Are they, during the interview process, you're told this is what you're going to be offered. But at the point of resuming, you actually, you actually started on another position. Now, that position, does it match up with what the JD that was described for you at the point of entry, at the point of the interview? So all these are why you need to have seen the offer, go through the offer, see whether it matches with what you actually wanted, what you desired, what you expected of that role before you pen down and you start a job. Never go into an employment, a new job, without saying the offer, without accepting the offer, without signing off, having your copy. I hear these days that people sign offer and they don't have their own copy. And I wonder, what kind of offer? What kind of job is that? I hear these days that people resume without having an, a signed offer letter by themselves. And they start work. And at the end of the uh, first month, second month, their head salary. What do you fall back to? Who do you get back to? Who do you report the case to? Is it on a verbal talk? Is it on a verbal conversation? Or you have a letter, a signed agreement between both parties showing that this is my evidence of being employed in this company. So in line with what you just said, because I know there is this labor law provision that an offer can be given or accepted within three months of starting a particular job. So that means not necessarily accepting a writing and collecting your acknowledged copy, right? So that means you can actually be on the job, but you have to ensure that within three months of that job, you should get your offer letter and accept it. However, because of the kind of environment we are, you are advising that um, you have to study, ensure that the terms and conditions are in sync with what you saw when yeah. you were coming on board yeah. before accepting. How would you want to reconcile that, being that the law is saying this, and you are saying this. Okay, from my own perspective, and what I advise people, never go into any job without having your signed document. Mm. It's safe, I guess. You're safer that way. Yeah. Never pick up a job without having a signed document. Signed document, you have your copy, and they have their copy acknowledging. All right? So I haven't said that... Um, I've seen people who did not study, who did not, okay, let me take it this way. By the time you were making research about the com that company, you made a lot of research before being employed. The company also did a background check on you yeah. before finding out whether you're a right person now. Now an offer has been issued to you just because you didn't ask the right question. Do they work on the weekend? What is the closing time? What is the resumption time? What are my bonuses? Am I entitled to HMO? What are my benefits? What bonus, when am I paid my bonuses? All this, you might be enjoying from your previous company, and you just assume. Assumption does not work in the place of offer. Mm -hmm. Saying what you have been given in mm -hmm. paper and making sure it, it aligns with what you want, then you can call that an offer once you've signed off with it. Wow. There was something he said, that assumption is never... Assumption does not work in the place of an offer. You don't assume that everything you want is covered in the offer when you've not seen it, when you've not itemized it, when you've not asked the question. I've been offered a job before, and when they gave me the pay, 
Some people don't know the differ difference between their gross pay and their net pay. Mm, that's another topic of no. <laughs> That's a very serious Some topic. don't know. Oh, you are paid the 200,000. Oh, I'm happy. They have, where you're coming from, they're getting a 197. Mm. And because it's not 200, you never know whether it's gross. Or net. Or net. I asked, what is my take home? Ask the question, what is my take home? What are my benefits? What bonuses am I entitled to? When do you pay these bonuses? And it's expected that all of these things are captured in, in the, the offer letter. letter. Don't assume. Don't assume that because uh, that's the standard of the industry. That's the standard of the industry, but does that company abide by that standard? Mm. What research did you make before taking that offer? Thank you.